This video is a continuation on our series regarding the spinal cord, and this video is going to focus on the spinothalmic pathway. So our spinothalmic pathway can be divided into our lateral and anterior spinothalmic tracts. They're named this way for their positions in the white columns. So our anterior spinothalmic tract travels in the anterior white column, where our lateral spinothalmic tract travels in the lateral white column. And the way that we distinguish these, besides the location of their axons, are the modalities that are carried. So in our lateral spinothalmic pathway, we carry pain and temperature sensations, whereas in our anterior spinothalmic pathway, we carry crude touch and pressure sensations. The way that I remember these are that they are somewhat alphabetical. So our lateral pathways carry pain and temperature. So all of those letters are closer together. Um, and then our anterior pathways carry crude touch, which is um, touch that is not easily discernible as uh, so you can't identify it as well. But our A and our C go together. And then whenever I think touch, I always think pressure. So touch and pressure always go together. Just like in our posterior column pathway, we carried fine touch, pressure, and vibration. So here we're carrying crude touch and pressure. Um, in our anterior spinothalmic pathway. So those are really the only differences in function. Our pathways are pretty much the same. Our first order neuron brings our information into the posterior gray horn. And our second order neuron is going to decussate or cross to the other side of the spinal cord immediately. Just as in our posterior column pathway, our second order neuron is going to come up to our thalamus where it synapses to a third order neuron. So our third order neuron, again our cell body is in our thalamus and we're carrying that information to our somatosensory cortex where we will then locate that stimulus on our body. So pain, temperature, crude touch, and pressure. Now these lead to some interesting phenomena, one of them being referred pain. Remember, you do not have a map of your organs on your brain. You have a map of your somatosensory, which is gonna be your skin and muscles, but you don't have a map of your organs. So when your organs are stimulated very strongly by a sensation such as pain, some of those electrical signals bleed or jump over into a labeled line associated with a part of your somatic senses. So if you think about your heart, your heart is located about here in your body, okay? So those uh, strong sensations from your heart are going to be coming into your spinal cord at about this level. Sensations from your arm come into your spinal cord just above your heart. So if you're having strong sensations in your heart, those action potentials or those electrical signals can jump over into that labeled line and then you feel pain radiating through the left side of your chest and your arm. In this picture down here, your stomach lies right here, so that correlates to that little green area. Your intestines are going to be all throughout this area. So when your intestines feel strongly, you get a belly ache down there. Your appendix lies right about here, and so that correlates this yellow area. These yellow guys there, these are gonna be your ureters. And then these two areas here correspond to your liver and gallbladder. 
phantom pain is another interesting phenomenon of our spinothalamic tract. Uh, you may not have a limb or a finger or whatever, but the labeled line still exists. And you have nerve endings associated with your thumb that are going to come into the spinal cord, go up to your brain, and then correspond to a particular part of your somatosensory cortex. If you chopped off your hand and your hand no longer existed, that labeled line still does exist. And just like in referred pain, action potentials can bleed over or jump into our spinothalamic tract or we can randomly stimulate that spinothalamic tract and it registers that you have pain in your hand. This is true for people who are born without limbs or fingers or toes. So the spinothalamic tracts are pretty cool. Our lateral spinothalamic tract carries pain and temperature. Our anterior spinothalamic tract carries crude touch and pressure. And if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your instructor.